Good morning, everyone. My name is Yin Xiong. I'm chief architect of the cloud platform at Huawei. Currently, I'm working on a project called PaaS, Platform as a Services, where I'm responsible for the architecture, the strategy, and the uh, technology innovation of that project or platforms, where the container is a big part of it. So I'm honored to be here this morning. I want to thank Linux Foundation to give us opportunity to stand here to talk about, to share with you what we do with containers. Hold on, sorry. What do we do with the container technology? How we think about the container ecosystems? Specifically today, I will talk a little bit about the container orchestration and managing platforms, how you can unleash the power of containers to our customer, to our partners. But first, for those who are new to Huawei, this is a brief introduction of the company. So we are a 29 years old company founded in 1987 in Shenzhen, China. How many of you have been in Shenzhen? Good. Well, it's a great city. It has a nickname called Silicon Valley of China. So I suggest you go if you have opportunities. So uh, by the end of last year, year 2015, the company has 170,000 employees with sales revenue of more than 60 billion. What do we do? We provide the network and the communication equipment. We build a network site, network tower for our telecom customers. We provide the storage and compare the servers. We build the data centers, including the cloud data centers for our enterprise customers. We also provide the software solutions for our customers to manage the network, to manage the data center resources. You know, we also have uh, cell phones. Many of you may already have a Huawei cell phones. So we make the mobile device, we make the apps on top of the devices. Now Huawei has many, many R&D centers around the globe. Now one of the strategy we have one of the strategies we have is the investment to open source technology. We're really committed to open source communities. As you see, we are planting a member of Linux Foundation, OpenNFV, CNCF. We are a gold member of OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, and many others. Now, we do this not only because we believe the world is moving to the direction of open software solutions, but also because our customer demand it. And this is a great news to us and great news to the communities. Now, talk about the container. Now, this is a container con, right? So we've got to talk about containers. Now, I want to show you a few numbers regarding the container adoption in China. In the recent study, the 40% of companies in the survey say they are using the container in production. While this is not a big number, but when you combine this with the company that has container in depth or test, and the company that planning to use the container technology within that six months, that number is more than 80%. That's astonishing. What does it mean? To me, it means that we already passed the stage where people ask why, why container? I think the question is now when and how. And this is exciting to, to us and exciting to the open source communities. Another exciting number, the growth rate of the, adopt, the container adoption in production compared with last year, 2015, that number is up 250%. Increase, that number increased by 250%. That's an amazing number. Again, what it means? To me, it means that the technology are maturing. The, the tools around the technology are maturing. And a big thanks to all of you who have worked hard and contributed to the community, contributed to the technology. Uh, you should be proud of yourself. Now our customer expect more from us, expect more from the community, and expect more from the open source communities and technology. Reason to use technology, the old container technology. There's no surprise here. The customer using the container for the benefits this technology is designed for, such as agile development process, fast deployment, 
better resource utilization, better application portability, you name it. Let's look at another number. How companies manage the container in production. In this study, that more than 50% of companies still manage the containers manually or writing the simple scripts. Only 42% of these companies use an orchestration platform such as Kubernetes, Mesos, or Docker Swarm. You know we are in the generation of cloud, right? How can we still manage things in the production manually or writing the sim uh, simple script? This is not a scalable. So we, want, we would like to see more company, more customers to use an orchestration platform. And we would like to see the number much bigger than 42%. So what is container technology or container orchestration? It turns out when you ask different people, they may give you different answers that focus on specific area of orchestration functions. I'm not trying to give an official definition of container orchestration since we have many ex experts here in this room. But simply that given a connection of containers to deep deploy, on the one side, and they gave it a pool of resource, virtual or physical, on the other side. The process to place these containers onto the servers, provisioning the storage, provisioning the uh, network, keep them running at the desired stage, the whole process is called orchestration. So we have a term now, cluster management, scheduling, service discovery, provisioning. But those are not new terms. But when we apply to container, now we have innovation in the container ecosystems. Let's look at some of the orchestration function in detail and see how we innovate to bring the full power of container to the customers, to your customers, to the partners. Most likely, your platform will run many different type of workload, right? Now with multi-scheduling framework, you can apply different scheduling algorithms to a, to a different type of workload, such as non-running jobs, non-running applications, batch jobs, big data jobs. And that's the power of scheduling. Or simply, you have one scheduler that target your resource utilization because you care about your resource usage. Or you have one scheduler to talk about, to target fast deployment because you care about how quickly your application can start up. And that's the power of scheduling. You can do both. Reservation-based and SL-based scheduling. Today, most of schedulers doing scheduling based on the CPU and the memory requirements. In some cases, however, in fact, in many cases, even developers themselves don't know how much resources we need for our application. So we have developed something called SLO-based scheduling, where you tell the platform, you tell us, what SOA you need for your application. The scheduler will figure out how much resources you need. And that's the power of scheduling. Another example in NFA scenarios. Imagine that your container applications are actually virtualized network function. Where you place those containers actually form a network topology. And that requires very different scheduling algorithms. In this scenario, in fact, you are defined the network topology through the orchestration platform, and that's the power of scheduling. Cluster management, another key function of orchestrations. Today, we have many research and uh, development innovation in these areas, both industrial and academic. But just the simple, simple fact that we can abstract a pool of resource, hide the differences of hardware, hide the differences of architecture, even operating systems, that make them transparent to our customer, transparent to, you, to your containers, and that's the power of cluster management. Additionally, you can share the same set of resource pool among different type of applications, but still isolate them without impact each other. That's the power of cluster management. If you want, you can steal some of the resource that already reserved for application, but has not been used much. You can steal this resource that 
to temporary workload to increase your resource utilization, and that's called our subscription, and that's the power of cluster management. Cluster federation. You hardly have one cluster in your production environment. With project like with project like Ubilate for Kubernetes or Mesos Federation, you can use the same API to deploy your containers onto the multiple clusters, which may reside on different data centers or even reside on different clouds like AWS, public cloud, for OpenStack, private cloud. And that's the power of cluster federation, and that's the power of cluster management. Storage orchestrations. True, today we have many drivers or volume plugins to attach a tile container to different type of storage servers or storage services. But to unleash the full power of container, it would be nice that we can abstract storage resource, just like we abstract the CPU and the memory, so that we can have a standard way to ask to provisioning the storage resource in a real time on demand. It would be nice that we have the ability to auto-scale the storage pools and auto-discover the storage services for your containers. If we can do that, that would be the power of storage orchestrations. Similarly, for container networking, which is a, another key function for enterprise to use in the container technology. And we have many network solutions there already. But again, to unleash the full power container, we think we need a common framework to plug in different type of network solutions on demand. We think we need a common way to configure your network policies in real time on demand to ensure the network security. We think we should have ability to schedule your containers based on network resource because there are some applications that care about network bandwidth, network latency, then the CPU and memories. It would be nice we have a schedule based on the network resource. Additionally, it would be nice that we have, we can monitor the network resource consumptions by your container and move your container around to achieve the application SOA or achieve your container SOA. And that would be great. And that's the power of network, the container networking. So put them all together, that forms our container strategies. This show an end-to-end -end container technology stack. In addition to the container storage, the networking, the orchestration, we have a project that working on container engine, container runtime, to make it secure, to change the corners, to make it secure containers. We have a project to work on container registry, like Docker Yard, we call Docker, uh, Docker Yard. We have a project working on the application model and deployment workflow so that we can deploy the containers on different orchestration platforms so don't, we don't have a lock in the one platform. We have a project working on the container DevOps pipeline for agile development process. Again, we want to unleash the full power of container with the orchestration platform, with the orchestration and management platforms. Lastly, but not least, I'm pleased to announce our first container services called Cloud Container Engine. CCE is based on the Kubernetes orchestration framework with advanced cluster management, advanced uh, scheduling algorithm, enhanced the securities, enhanced the monitoring features, and, and, and much money more. If you are interested in the CCEs, you can stop by at the Huawei's booth, and we'll be happy to talk to you for more information. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the day and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.